Good morning. I'd like to uh, call the planning committee meeting of the Orange County Transportation Council uh, to order. Um, I'm just going to start off. Uh, I'll just go through the list of the members present. Um, I'm Alan Sorensen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. sound here. I can barely hear this. Yes, a little bit disoriented. I tried pushing on. Make it sound. Oh, Al, <laughs> Al, can we meet you? Okay, um, well, my video is good. So, Alan Sorensen, I have a proxy from County Executive Steve Newhouse. Uh, members of the uh, with the proxy for New York State DOT. Um, City of Newburgh is represented by State. For us, uh, Jake Dewell, City of Port Jervis, Jim Farr. Um, we also have representation from the town of Warwick, Mike Sweeten, uh, town of Crawford, uh, Charlie Carnes, town of Deer Park, Gary Spears, and the village of Walden, John Rubella. I'm not sure if anyone else has walked in. So those are the list of the members present. Uh, I guess for the members who are uh, have called in. Um, I'll just ask that you uh, acknowledge your presence. Are um, there any? Yeah, so Olu Falorin from MTA, Jay Sheffield from the Port Authority of New York, New Jersey, Josh Wojciechowski, I think I said it right, um, from the town of Cornwall, <clears throat> Kristen Reznikoff from the New York State Thruway Authority. Um, we have representation from Lance McMillan and Sandra Jobson of Nizat Region 8. Um, and others, and that's it for the members. And then I also have Al Fusco um, and Zach Coleman, OCTC staff, and I believe that's Moisha Gruber. Mr. G, are you on the call? Okay, uh, so, so we have a quorum. Um, we will actually have uh, two public comment uh, periods. I, I, so I'd like to open it for opportunity for public comment. I'll just note that we will have a presentation on the transportation improvement program. Uh, and thereafter, we'll also uh, open up the floor for public comment. We just want to do introductions for the rest of the so, oh, I'm sorry for the staff we'll members <laughs> present. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Jessica Ridgway. Travis Evold. Rob Harrington. And do we have anyone online with us this morning? I think Harriet Lewis just joined, but I think everyone else we covered. Okay. <laughs> um, so, the first, uh, so I'm opening up for public comment. Uh, are there any members of the public present who would like to speak? Okay, hearing none, I will move on to acceptance of the meeting transcript uh, of August 9th, 2022. Are there any comments uh, with respect to or revisions to the transcript? Okay, hearing none, I will call for a motion to accept the meeting transcript of August 9th. Um, Jacob, second. Gary? All those members in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Are there any members opposed? So the motion passes. Okay, so um, next we're going to have the uh, transportation improvement program uh, public presentation. I'll just uh, start off uh, before Lauren goes into the presentation, just um, a little prelude to the presentation. So as part of the transportation management area, Orange County Transportation Council is required to hold a public meeting during the TIP development process. That's per 23 CFR 450.326B. Per the Orange County Transportation Council Public Participation Plan, which outlines the guidelines for public involvement in the transportation improvement program, Orange County Transportation Council will hold a formal presentation during an Orange County Transportation Council Planning Committee meeting. This presentation will meet the requirements. 
The meeting will be posted online in a draft of the Orange County Transportation Council fiscal year 2023-2027 Transportation Improvement Program and accompanying documents will go out for a 30-day comment period beginning tomorrow, September 8th, 2022. I'm now gonna turn it over to Lauren Bennett to give us a presentation. Thereafter, I will open the floor to public comment um, with respect to the presentation. Lauren? Thank you. Yeah, so welcome um, to the Orange County Transportation Council Transportation Improvement Program, or TIP, as it will be referred to, um, update for the federal fiscal year 2023 to, through 2027 public presentation. Next slide. Um, so the presentation outline will just give a brief overview of the Orange County Transportation Council, or OCTC, and the TIP. We'll highlight previous TIP accomplishments and then dive into the draft of the fiscal year 2023 through 2027 uh, transportation improvement program. We'll give an outline of the update process, the financial um, overview and plan, as well as highlight some of the projects on the draft tip. And then we'll end with concluding remarks and how to access the draft tip and provide an opportunity for public comment before closing out. So the Orange County Transportation Council is the Metropolitan Planning Organization or MPO for Orange County. MPOs are established by the governor for urbanized areas with populations greater than 50,000. The OCTC is also part of the Mid-Hudson Valley Transportation Management Area, or TMA, with Ulster County Transportation Council and Dutchess County Transportation Council. The OCTC is a consortium and cannot enter into contracts. Therefore, Orange County acts as its host agency to the MPO. The OCTC is comprised of a planning committee, which represents is represented by all municipalities in Orange County and a policy board. The council is a consensus based decision making body and is responsible for the continuing comprehensive and collaborative transportation planning process. The council um, or the OCTC board is compromised is comprised of permanent voting members, voting members on a rotating basis and permanent non voting members. Um, so for more information on the makeup of the OCTC and its planning committee and policy board, you can reference the operating procedures, which are located on the OCTC website. The OCTC is required to develop three core documents, the long range transportation plan, which is a long range plan with a 20 year horizon planning horizon um, that was last updated in November 2019. It's updated every four years, um, so we'll be looking to for our next iteration of the LRTP in November 2023. Um, so that work will begin shortly. There's also the Unified Planning Work Program, which is the annual work program, and that is updated with a state fiscal year, begins April 1st. And finally, the Transportation Improvement Program. So what is the Transportation Improvement Program? It is also known as the TIP, is a five-year capital program for federal funded transportation projects. It follows the federal fiscal year, which runs October 1st through September 30th. Can you go to the next slide? Um, and includes projects on local highway, transit, bridge, New York State Bridge Authority projects, New York State Thruway Authority projects, MTA Metro North projects, and NYSDOT multi County projects. The TIP must be fiscally constrained which means that the proposed improvements must balance the cost and with the expected revenues to be available. Finally, each MPO and rural program are compiled to create the State Transportation Improvement Program, or the STIP, and the STIP is a four-year program um, with the MPO's TIP being a five-year capital program. So the types of projects on the TIP, um, and some examples include, um, but not are, are not limited to bridge projects, traffic improvement projects, bicycle and pedestrian projects, transit projects, safety projects, et cetera. Um, so how to read the tip. So this is what we would refer to as a tip strip. Um, so it includes a project is given a unique ID or a pin number and projects are broken out by phase and funding by fiscal year. And the how to read the tip is available on the OCTC website and it is also included in the appendix of the tip narrative. Um, so before we dive into the fiscal year 2023-2027 draft tip, I wanted to highlight some of the accomplishments um, that um, were constructed during the 2020-2024 um, tip cycle. 
And so some of the projects completed um, include Route 208 sidewalk project in the village of Walden, the Heritage Trail extension from Hartley Road to downtown Middletown, um, East Main Street Bridge Rehabilitation and the East Main Street Reconstruction, um, and also the sidewalk and ADA improvements in the city of Middle and the city of Fort Jervis. Um, standing next to the <laughs> um, uh, and then the Lake Road Metro North Railroad Bridge replacement in the town of New Windsor. Um, some projects that were obligated and are either current or going to go to construction or are currently in construction include the Orange County, um, the Orange County, oh. Go one more slide. Okay. Yeah, this one. Um, so projects obligated. This includes the Orange County Safety <laughs> Improvements Project, which was um, funded through a statewide solic solicitation of the Pedestrian Safety Action Plan, or PSAP. Um, so there's how many locations in a second? Don't oh, I put it. Okay. <laughs> um, quite a few. In the village and town of Cornwall, um, construction began in 2021, and um, they're expecting the project completed um, sometime at the end of 2022. And then um, we also have the Lake Drive Bridge over the Quisay Creek project. Um, staff was lucky enough a few years ago to go out to the city of Newburgh and um, see this project. So you can see the buckling of the culverts um, from this is the rotting of it. So this the culverts were replaced with a bridge. Um, the bridge includes sidewalks and also has space for, I guess, a future trail connection, um, the Quisay Creek Trail. And then some other projects. Oh, go back. Sorry, I can go back. It's out of order. Uh, one more. Yep. So these are projects that were obligated for construction. Um, the city of Middletown traffic operations was a $30 million project altogether and upgrades 28 intersections and ADA sidewalk improvements and was authorized to begin construction in May 2021. Um, and the pro project will continue phase construction through uh, fiscal year 2024. Um, we also have the Warwick bike route and pedestrian trip, which was obligated, but it's not been constructed yet. Um, the Lake Street and stage road pedestrian improvements, which was a tap project in the village of Monroe, and then the town of Crawford pedestrian improvements, um, which I believe was just obligated in August. Um, so I wanted to highlight these because the COVID pandemic had a substantial impact on the MPO, um, though the council continued to meet virtually throughout the pandemic. Um, we did see a lot of ongoing trends with the fiscal year 2020-2024 TIP, um, mainly the increased funding of costs for construction and construction inspection um, due, due to increased demand of labor and supply chain issues. Um, so the OCTC saw many funding requests from members due to the differences in the original project ex estimation and final estimation bidding prices. This impact project timelines and further increased construction costs, and it often fell on local project sponsors to make up for that funding gap. Um, so this greatly impacted the TIP <coughs> development process um, especially you'll see in the first two years, there's a lot of construction projects um, that were rolled into fiscal year 2023 and 2024 um, on this draft tip. So I did want to mention that. Um, so now we'll go to the tip update process and key milestones. So the update process. So what is the tip update process? It is outlined in CFR or 23 CFR 450.326. Um, and that is the development and content of the transportation improvement program. So the tip um, shall be developed for the metropolitan planning area, which is Orange County, in cooperation with NYSDOT and it affected public transportation operators. And that was represented by Transit Orange staff who work closely with the transit, transit operators. Um, it also needs to reflect investment priorities established in the current long range transportation plan provide all interested parties with the opportunity to comment on the proposed tip, provide at least one formal public meeting, um, and will be published and made uh, readily available for public review. So some of the highlights um, for the update process. So we began meeting with 
um, projects, existing project sponsors in December and January um, 2022 to review existing projects so that costs, scopes, and schedules reflected the most up-to-date information available. Um, and then in March 25th, 2022, NISDOT circulated the fiscal targets and instructions to MPOs. Um, we held multiple TIP development discussions during the OCTC planning committee meetings. Um, and we had concurrence from the planning committee to move forward on the draft program at the August 9th, uh, 2022 planning committee meeting. And so we started the, after that, we sent um, we started the consultation process, especially with the interagency consultation group for air quality um, beginning in August, 2022. So the draft OCTC tip. Um, so as stated, um, NISOT released the planning targets for MPOs on March 25th. The regional targets were developed without assumptions of the new surface transportation authorization. Um, while the bipartisan infrastructure law is a once in a generation investment on transportation system and provided planning stability and guaranteed funding levels. Um, it was mostly targeted at 2 programs, the new supplemental bridge formula program and the national highway performance program. Other funding programs are largely distributed through discretionary programs, um, such as competitive solicitations and new formula programs. Um, and those are still being developed. Um, Throughout the summer, I like Dalian. Um, so it's important to remember that the targets are for planning purposes and do not represent a commitment of funding on behalf of FHWA, Federal Highway Administration, and or New York State Department of Transportation. So the TIP financial overview. Um, TIP financial plans are required per CFR 23 Part 450, 326J, I. I or J. Um, and it must demonstrate how the tip can be implemented, indicate resources from public and private sources that are reasonably expected to be available to carry out the program and identifies innovative financing techniques to finance projects, programs and strategies. And the tip financial plan must also demonstrate fiscal constraint. So here, um, just to highlight here are the region eight targets. Um, the region eight program includes. Uh, local program targets for the MPOs. Those MPOs include Orange County Transportation Council, the Mid Hudson South TCC, um, which is part of the New York City Metropolitan um, Transportation Council or NIMTEC, um, Dutchess County Transportation Council, Ulster County Transportation Council, and um, CTAC, which is uh, the Columbia. Transportation um, committee, they are not an MPO, they're a, um, but they do have a transportation committee. And then NISDOT. So we presented this, I think, back in April and May, um, the breakdown of the funding. It's largely about 70% of the total regional aid program goes to NISDOT, um, with Orange County seeing just 5% of the overall program. Um, and then you go to the next one. So the local program targets, here's a snapshot of the targets we received for the local program. Um, for OCTC, there's approximately 40 million over the next five years for planning purposes, which breaks out to almost 8 million a year. Um, and that's 18.5 million for CMAC, 18.7 in STBG large urban, and 4.4 million in the STBG off system bridge. So those are the three fund core funding programs that OCTC receives and must um, fiscally constrained. And so uh, I'll give a brief program overview and these are um, estimates. So this may change slightly um, in the final version. Um, but so the local program includes a, a total of 21 projects with um, 40, just over 49 million in core federal aid funding. Um, not all of that counts against the targets because some of it is rolling over from the current tip onto the new draft tip. Um, and about 4.2 million is in the discretionary funding like TAP um, and STPG or the TAP flex, uh, safe routes to school, whatnot. So it totals just over 50 million on the local program. Um, the New York State DOT projects include bridge, highway, safety, and mobility projects. There's a total of 15 in Orange County, 
um, with over almost 125 million in federal aid funding, funding and um, 85 million in state funds. And there's five multi-county um, projects on the OCTC tip, um, which is just under 10 million. Um, and then finally, the transit program, which uses FTA funding um, for the operation, maintenance, and purchase for future capital projects on the trans transit system. And OCTC's programming is of just over 100 million um, over the next five years. So the total program program funding uh, in the OC planning area, um, there's going to be just under 300 million in federal aid funding programmed over the next five years. Uh, 187 million is FHWA funding and 105 million is the FTA funding. And with the state and local matches that are required, um, we're looking at almost $410 million um, to be programmed over the next five years, uh, planned to be programmed over the next five years in Orange County. So we're definitely seeing a significant um, investment in infrastructure in Orange County. So a breakdown of some of the project highlights for local projects, um, the city of Newburgh um, has a combined project with um, Broadway pedestrian traffic signal improvements and the traffic signal upgrades. Um, and that's looking to go into construction in fiscal year 2024. Um, the city of Middletown will continue um, the construction of its uh, traffic operations improvements into the fiscal year 2023-2024. Orange County has um, two big projects programmed. Um, you have the Heritage Trail Extension and also the um, Scunamonk Trail Construction, which will look to go in fiscal year 23 or 24. Um, and that's using 50 FTA 5307. And that's the first time we've used um, Orange County has used FTA 5307 to construct um, a trail to connect to existing um, transit connections. There's also the village of Curious Joel has a combined of 10, just under 11 million um, in three projects. Um, the roadway improvements, roadway and sidewalk improvements, and then in the only new project going on the local program is the new park and ride lot expansion at the existing lot in Forest Road. Um, and these projects are anticipated in construction in 2023 and 2025. And then finally, um, NYSLAT has an operational and safety improvement um, project at State Route 94 and County Route 1A in the town of Warwick. For the transit project highlights, um, so the transit program consists of FTA 5307, 5310, 5311, and 5339 funding. Um, transit programs largely uh, includes funding, funding block pins for operation mm -hmm. service and maintenance, mm -hmm. as well as some capital purchases um, to ensure that OCTC and Transit Orange maintain a system that supports the state of good repair performance measures uh, as outlined in the transit asset management plan. Um, so their OCTC has a backlog or Transit Orange has a backlog of transit funding from previous FTA grants that reached back to 2019 and total approximately 37 million uh, for 5307 funds and about 3 million for 5339 funds. Um, so, that is important to note because transit program is a little bit different than the highway program. Um, so they'll program in grants and you can also use older grants in projects. So like the Scunamonk project is uh, um, planned in 2023 for obligation, but it uses grants from I think 2017, 2018, 18. 2019. Um, yeah. Yeah, we just pulled in. Uh, that's part of the current application so that we didn't those funds did not lapse yeah so uh, so while the transit program um, targets are a little bit lower than what we're programming um, with the backlog we do um, show fiscal constraint for the transit projects and then the nice dot project highlights um, so the projects are mainly the NHPP and STVG flex funding um, and also state funding. Um, so there's three real big projects to highlight that includes um, a almost 30 million project to replace Route 17M bridge over the Nor Norfolk Southern NJ 
Transit Railroad in the town and village of Chester. Uh, $82 million project for the stage two uh, construction of Route 17 exit 122 interchange in the town of Walk Hill. And then $12.3 million pro uh, for a project for resurfacing I-84 from the Interstate 87 interchange to Route 208. Um, so the final, the next slide will shows the fiscal constraint table. Um, this is also available in the um, OCTC tip narrative. Um, and this shows the, um, yeah, the tip, full tip is included in the project listings, the financial plan, and fiscal constraint table in the tip narrative. Okay. Lauren, thank you. <clears throat> That's a very thorough overview. I uh, want to take this opportunity really to uh, thank Lauren in particular for pulling this all together, but also to acknowledge uh, the other team members that uh, also played a role. Um, Donna Showalter, who's our new ArcGIS uh, technician, uh, Zach Coleman, who's our uh, senior environmental planner, Jessica Ridgway, uh, who's a planner um, who floats between uh, land use, transit, transportation. So she's our all around planner. And Rob Perrington, who's with us today, um, who heads up our transit unit. Also, I uh, want to acknowledge the contributions from New York State DOT. Uh, Sandra Jobson, uh, Nicole Farmer, who's here with us, uh, Jonathan Hill, uh, Patrick Lentil contributed on the air quality. Um, so there, there's a lot of coordination that goes into this process. Also, Travis Seawalt here, County DPW. Uh, there is a lot of uh, coordination between the agencies that goes into the development of this. And we just want to take a few minutes uh, to acknowledge that. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting that following this presentation, I would again open, open it up uh, if there are any members from the public uh, that would have any comments or questions. So, yeah. so we'll just briefly go over the tip timelines, what's next. Um, so at the conclusion of the presentation, the, uh, we'll have an opportunity for public comment. We'll also be reviewing in the planning committee meeting, we'll review the um, fiscal year 2023-2027 TIP, the TIP narrative, the Orange County self-certification, and also the air quality transportation conformity determination. All these items will be available for public co comment starting tomorrow, and it runs through October 7th. And the council will tentatively adopt these items at the October 11th policy board meeting. Um, so how to access the draft. Um, so the OCTC draft will be posted on the website at orangecountygov.com backslash OCTC. We'll have a link on the front page. Um, we also have a new initiative, um, which is a ARC Hub site. We really wanted to create a more um, user-friendly experience. Um, so, and we will view that in just a second, um, but that's also available to view um, and we included that uh, tip project screening tool as well. Um, so it has all the local program projects and you can look at the projects um, and compare it to the environmental justice areas um, and environmentally sensitive areas as well. Um, and you can view where the projects are at and it's a dynamic map. Um, there'll be a printed copy at the Orange County Planning Department at 124 Main Street in Goshen, New York on the first floor. Um, you can also request a copy by contacting OCTC staff. And uh, as mentioned earlier, this public meeting is being recorded and will be posted on YouTube on the OCTC YouTube channel um, for future viewing. Um, and so to submit public comment, um, you have the opportunity um, at the end of the presentation, you can email OCTC at orangecountygov.com um, or you can send comments via mail um, they'll need to be received during the public comment period. Um, if you need assistance in accessing the materials or sharing public comment, please call OCTC staff at 845-615-3840. With that, I'll just ask once again if there are any members from the public that would like to speak. Uh, I, want, I want to raise uh, just uh, one point of clarity. Uh, 
in the tip listing on the draft listing there is a few uh, pin numbers which seems to be like a a, a catch all uh, just holding money for future distribution for example uh cmac uh there is a listing for uh 8blk01 which seems to be like a holding pot for cmac funding uh and the same is the next line which seems to be a holding pot for uh for uh, also for uh, this is uh, surface transportation off system bridge and the next one is a holding pot for for uh, uh, stbg lg urban block uh, what's the process of distribution from these three holding uh, pins for uh, it seems to be holding for future distribution yeah, thanks for, I forgot to mention that. Thank you, Gedalia. Um, so as part of the development for the TIP, um, the council decided to um, create block pins for the funding for future years. Um, there's some funding in a very little bit in fiscal year 25. And then I believe um, all the targets are full for all three funding sources for 26 and 27. Um, so we will, hopefully look to do a call definitely for the off system bridge funding. Um, we've talked about that a little bit. We need to re up. We need to update the tip solicitation. There's not been a solicitation with OCTC since I believe sometime in the 2000 early 2000s. Um, so we really need to update that process. Um, and we've kind of talked with members at previous meetings that will look to do that really start that immediately after um, the tip is adopted. Um, so possibly fall 2022, we'll start that process. Um, and then for the CMAC and STB G large urban, um, we can also possibly do a call for that. Um, typically the funding um, is, there's just been a lot of funding shortages as we mentioned with some of those um, trends we've seen with projects going way over the estimation, coming back for bids. Um, so um, at a future date, the members can decide if they want to um, use that for existing projects to assist members on project sponsors, or if they want to go out for a call. Um, but for now, that is block funding um, in, the tip, in the draft tip. Thank you for that clarification. One other point of clarification. Uh, you mentioned earlier, and it's specifically relevant within the narrative, uh, the idea of environmental justice and disadvantaged communities. Uh, this is a new phenomenon that was uh, mostly born in the bipartisan infrastructure bill uh, and in other uh, big pieces of legislation uh within the current uh, uh congressional uh term and uh there is no clear definition yet uh what and uh, what criteria are used to define which community falls within an environmental justice uh the state when they did the the pel study uh for uh, redoing the 17 and all the improvements of adding a lane, uh, they used the criteria which was broader than the current narrative has outlined. And because of that, more federal funding will be made available to those communities, to, to the to the OCTAC to distribute uh, because if it has uh, more environmental justice communities within the OCTAC. The current uh, draft, the current reading has a very narrow definition, basically making only Middletown and Newburgh uh, fall within the definition. Uh, but there are other definitions out there used by multiple state agencies, by DET, D, uh, DEC, by NYSERDA and others. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I urge the OCTAC to take a broader reading of, of uh, the environmental justice and make itself more 
uh, uh, open for more federal funding coming into the Octag because of that. And, and then having more money to distribute uh, to more communities if more communities fall within the environmental justice area. Yeah, thank you for that comment. I do want to clarify. So environmental justice is was actually established in an executive order in 1994, and it's defined its federal actions to address environmental justice in minority populations and low income populations. So what the environmental justice does is it looks to identify and address disproportionately high and adverse human and health and environmental impacts on low income and minority populations. So for the tip narrative, we used the guidelines of that environmental justice executive order just to analyze where projects are and um, in, rel in um, relation to these areas. We use census tracts for that. Um, and so this is something that the OCTC has been doing for years. You know, it is a requirement as part of the tip narrative. Um, so when you were mentioning with the funding, that's actually the, that is, there is a disadvantaged communities, I guess, proportion and the e environmental, what is it called? Justice 40 communities that um, came out of the bill and this new, um, I guess, presidency, um, which is different than environmental justice. And they do have different criteria. And I do believe that some of the funding is tied to those communities. And so those are it's kind of its own thing. Um, so it, it's not the same as the environmental justice communities. Um, so with this, we are not trying to limit funding to just the environmental justice areas. We're looking to ensure that the projects that are in the injustice, environmental justice areas are not disproportionately affecting low income and minority communities. And that kind of comes out of, I guess, the Robert Moses days of, you know, creating the uh, highway through a community, you know, in the Bronx and whatnot. So we're trying to um, make sure that doesn't happen again, I guess, on a high level. Um, so, so let, let me just uh, uh, add, add to that. The, the 1994 executive order uh, is, is quite old. Uh, and, and if you uh, catch up on reading on the bipartisan infrastructure and other new legislation coming out from the Biden administration and from the current Congress, they're a lot more liberal and they have a lot more criteria to it. We have invested a lot to study on the issue uh, for different agencies, for EPA, for DOT. Uh, and we would uh, gladly uh, submit to you uh, our findings. Uh, so I think relying on a 1994 executive order, which was a lot more limited, uh, than, than the current trend is uh, would uh, limit the resources that OCTAC would be receiving because they're set aside on a federal level that if, uh, if an OCTAC, if an MPO uh, shows that it has a higher percentage that uh, fits the eligibility, that would be more money coming into the OCTC. Gedalia, if... Uh... I'd welcome the opportunity to, to, if you could share that information with us, so we can take that into consideration. Okay, and I did, I did submit uh, public comments today with some of the uh, 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 pointers on that. But if uh, uh, if you if you want to dig in more to the uh, uh, wording and 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 uh, other processes pertaining to this. Uh, I would gladly put you guys in, in touch with uh, the planner that uh, we have retained for this purpose. Okay, yeah, I, I welcome that opportunity. Yeah, and I will add too, we do look at transportation vulnerable populations as well. And so that includes limited English proficiency policies or LEP populations, uh, individuals living with dis disabilities, low income households. Um, so that's 50% of the county and county median income, household income, individuals age 65 plus, 
individuals with less than a high school diploma and zero car households. So we have identified um, these um, populations as transportation vulnerable, and we're including these maps in the appendix of the TIP narrative. Um, they're also included in the uh, public participation plan. Um, so we do consider other transportation vulnerable populations as well, and we encourage um, members to you know view these maps when you are bringing um, projects along, so you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. With that, are there any other members from the public that have comments? Just want a question for clarity. Yeah. Um, the Shenmue Trail grants. What were those originally slated for? In 17, 18, 19. Were those originally for? Mm -hmm. They they were not. Uh, well, they weren't actually, sorry, I'll jump yeah. in. They weren't actually grants. They were apportionments is really the correct yeah. term from, okay. from then. And they weren't in a grant yet. So yeah. it's locked them up in a grant. Because so they're, they're good. Uh, 507 funds are good for a uh, year of apportionment plus five. Yeah, there's one shirt that said grant. I was like, what grant was that? I don't remember that. Yeah, that's, that's Rob's. It's kind okay. of the format uh, allocation. Yeah. And we are working, uh, we are working to develop a a pipeline of projects. Well, I like grants. I'm your own. Make sure. <laughs> so do we. Uh, but uh, apportionments are even nice. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, uh, any other public comment questions from the board? If not, on behalf of the board, MPO staff, uh, I want to thank all the attendees and anyone that made public comment. And with that, <clears throat> this will conclude the TIP public presentation. Um, and then we can move on to old business. Yeah, do you want to just real, go back real quick and we can show the uh, our hub site? Oh, yes, up. okay. Um, one more, yeah. Okay. See if it shows up. So, we created this as kind of like a one stop shop for all things transportation improvement program. Um, so we'll also post all of the documents on here. So, um <laughs> And yeah, the R code really came out nice. Oh, so. yeah. yeah. So it kind of explains uh, what who the OCTC is um, and the focus of the three core projects and programs. Um, and then keep scrolling. The development of the tip um, OCTC by the numbers tip by the numbers. And then finally, the project screening tool. Um, so, and you can zoom in and out of this to see the location of where the projects are. Um, and then there's some environmentally, I think it's the layers are environmentally sensitive areas. So um, sensitive biodiversity areas and floodplains um, and then the environmental justice areas um, so this isn't this is just a screening tool um, so you can see where the projects are located um, so it doesn't um, replace environmental um, that needs to be done with engineering but at least you can um, start the screening process with that so and you'll see we have the standard county disclaimer on the map yeah so. yeah don't come to us <laughs> <laughs> this is this is really impressive. I mean, the whole presentation going back into what uh, Orange County Transportation Council is and uh, the whole organization development of the tip very very impressive. I don't recall any presentation like this in the past. Honestly, uh, such a comprehensive, uh, very impressive, very good. The MPO staff have really, Lauren in particular, uh, put all this together. So it's uh, it's a lot of work. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, old business. Okay. Back to new business. So uh, we're going to have a discussion on the tip narrative, um, and I'm going to ask Lauren to uh, to lead us in that discussion. Yeah. So um, turn it out. Of new copies of the tip narrative, um, but this went around with the meeting materials. Um, so 
The TIB narrative is a required document that accompanies the, um, the transportation improvement program, so that TIP listing. Um, and it provides an informative explanation of the capital program. Um, so the narrative explains the TIP, how it's developed, how changes are made, as well as the financial plan. Um, and it touches on the congestion management, environmental mitigation and resiliency, regional transportation planning, environmental justice, and Title VI. Um, and as the TIP narrative, as part of the TIP, is being included in the statewide TIP and will be submitted to FHWA and our Federal Highway Administration and the Federal Transit Administration for approval. Um, so I don't know if anyone had any comments or questions or had the opportunity to look through the document, um, but this will go out. We'll send this out at the end of the day today and public comment will start tomorrow. Um, and we just have to, I think, include some of the appendices in there. Um, but. Warren, anything further on that? Do you want to move on to self-certification? There's no question about <laughs> Okay. Well, the going's good. Um, I want to lead us in the self-certification discussion. Yeah, so the self-certification is something that is federally required, um, with the last one being completed in the 2020-2024 TIP update. Um, so cert the certification will go into the appendix of the TIP narrative, but there will need to be a separate resolution um, for the self-certification for consideration at the October policy board meeting. Um, so do we have, I think we have a, so you did not receive this in the meeting material. So we can briefly just run through this. So this is all prescribed. Um, there's a template that um, NISDOT provides us. And so we just went in and updated information. Um, so it includes required agreements. Um, I'm gonna keep scrolling just. Um, the planning technical, so the UPWP, the transportation plan, um, the transportation improvement program, um, technical areas. So some of the other projects that we were working on um, that were completed in the last state fiscal year. Um, special considerations, so Title VI, private operators, planning factors, um, congestion management process, public involvement. Um, so this really outlines everything that the OCTC is kind of required um, to do and how we meet the requirements. Coordinated human services plan and then administrative management um, and whatnot. So we are self-certifying that we meet the requirements. Uh, we also recently went through the um, TMA certification, um, which we believe also certifies us, but we just did this as a, um, a complement to the TIP update. Um, so the report's available. Any questions for the members? If not, we'll move on next to the draft air quality transportation conformity determination form. So the EPA requires transportation conformity be demonstrated by an NPO in a non-attainment and maintenance area whenever transportation projects are significantly impacted uh, air quality are programmed. So um, the transportation improvement program triggered that transportation conformity requirement. Um, Orange County is in a non-attainment area for ozone and also the maintenance area for fine particulate matter. So because there were no non, new non-exempt projects added to the TIP in the horizon years remain the same, OCTC is relying on previous regional emissions analysis completed in 2021. Um, this will go out for 30 days of public comment with the draft TIP and um, the council will seek action uh, at the October 11th policy board meeting. Um, so we can just scroll down through. I just wanna show the regional emissions towards the end. Um, so the, yeah, 12, there you go. Um, thank you. So you can see the um, OCTC admissions and the NIMTIC emissions are both considered for the particulate matter for PM 2.5 and also the NOx. Um, and the conclusion is that we pass all the budgets. So you see the SIP budget up top, um, right below the analysis year. Um, so we're well within the budgets for both the annual NOx and the annual PM 2.5. Questions? Okay, we'll keep it moving along. Uh, next up, a discussion on the 2023 safety performance target. 
Yes, so this action is um, an annual support of the NISDA established statewide highway and non motorized performance measures. So by agreeing to support NISDA safety targets, we are saying that OCTC will plan and program projects that contribute to realizing these targets. Uh, these PMs are established for the Highway Safety Strategic Plan and established statewide targets for five federally required items. Um, number of fatalities, number of fatalities per 100 million vehicle miles traveled, number of serious injuries, rate of serious injuries per 100 million vehicle miles traveled, and number of non-motorized fatalities and non-motorized serious injuries. Do you want to scroll to the next page real quick? Um, this shows the targets, uh, the three targets. And continue to uh, support the state targets. So we'll look these the 2023 safety performance targets are included in the tip narrative. Um, and we'll look to adopt these at the October um, 11th policy board meeting. Are there any questions on these? Okay, that's very good. Thank you. Um, I'm going to move on next to reports. Um, Transportation Council staff reports. The one I didn't add this, but we are doing the our annual um, counts on the Heritage Trail oh, sure. next week. Um, so we also um, through the Creating Healthy Schools and Communities grant have a purchased an automated counter and we've installed that on the heritage trail in Middletown. So we do have um, update numbers for 24 hours. I think it's 15 minute increments and we'll keep that up for the lifetime of the grant, I believe. So we'll have some counts. Um, we're looking to purchase two more to put along the heritage trail. Um, I think the purchase has already been made. We're just waiting for it um, yes, or should have it off. soon. Yeah. Um, so. What about is the council in the heritage trail on the top? Where about um, numbers? Yeah, that's right location. We're not going to give the exact location. Oh. No, no, no. no. Yeah. That's what I just said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll show you. <laughs> it's, it's in the city. <laughs> Somewhere in the city. Wait a second. Does it count walkers as well as drivers? It does not split out because exactly. um, that's more expensive and we'd have to install the, um, the tubes for the bicycle counts. Um, so it is just a generic count of anyone that breaks the plane. Um, it's an infrared counter. So, so you'll get everybody, just mm -hmm. not. Yeah, so we here. won't break it out, but we yeah. do have okay. the splits in the manual counts. So when we yeah. go out, we'll go to that location mm -hmm. and we'll have what the splits are and we'll just estimate from there, okay. the bicycles and pedestrians. Okay. Um, anything to add? Jess has been um, pushing this initiative um, and really taking this on. So thank you. <laughs> do you have anything to add? I don't think so. Just cross your fingers for nice weather next week when we're out doing the manual counts. And if you see us, it's like, wait. <laughs> yeah. And if anyone is interested in volunteering or knows of anyone that is interested in volunteering, uh, yeah. please read that, reach out to Jessica. And that's the Wednesday and Saturday. I would say not only are they uh, managing the, uh, the software, but they also did the installation <laughs> <laughs> all around. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, we have a save the date for the policy board meeting on Tuesday, October 11th at 1 p.m. Uh, that's the Tuesday following, I believe, Columbus Day. Um, yeah. So just a little reminder for everyone. And it, it's it falls it falls on the Sukkot holiday, so I won't be able to attend. But uh, I may be submitting written comments before that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, and you can also always um, send a proxy as well. Um, okay. Okay. If interested. Um, Are there other member reports? The traffic operation uh, project is really moving along, and uh, we're making major progress. And. Uh, the only thing is going to be held back is paving this year because the intersections are not completed. And we want to do the paving all at once, not just pave the road and then leave the intersection out and come back and pave it again. So that's the only thing that's been held back. Okay. Just paving. 
the most progress is uh, to be done. Okay, if there are no other member reports, um, I'm gonna, I will ask for an adjournment, uh, but simultaneously just ask that all the members stay present because we have, this is a back-to-back -back meeting, we have policy board meeting next. So first I'll ask for a motion to adjourn the planning committee meeting. I'll make it. Jacob, second. second. Mike, all those members uh, in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 Yeah. So meeting is adjourned. Um, I'm going to immediately uh, ask that we adjourn the policy board meeting of September 7th, 2022. Um, I, unless anyone's left, I'm assuming that all the members that were present for the planning board meeting are still present. Could I a second and did join? Okay, um, so, so we have one additional. Yeah, um, and I believe Eric Denega also, the commissioner of the Orange County DPW, also joined us. Okay, so um, I'd like, to, if I haven't already said it, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, we the as I mentioned, the we've already made the introductions. Uh, I'm just going to run through the voting member list so that it's it's formalized. Uh, so members present: myself, Alan Sorensen, uh, representing uh, County Executive Steve Newhouse. Uh, Nicole Farmer is here with New York State DOT. Uh, Olu, I believe, is on for MTA. Uh, for MTA. Um, Jason Morris representing the city of Newburgh, Jacob Twill, city of Middletown, Jim Farr, city of Port Jervis, uh, Mike Sweeten from the town of Warwick, Charlie Carnes, town of Crawford, Gary Spears, town of Beer Park, John Ravella, village of Walden. I don't have the list for me, Lawrence, but is anyone I missed? Josh from town of Cornwall. Josh from on, town. yeah, okay. virtually. And uh, Gadal, you say Gadal. And then, um, yeah. Okay. All right, for those members present, uh, thank you. Um, I would next like to uh, provide another opportunity for public comment. So are there any members from the public that uh, have any comments or questions for the Transportation Council? Okay, I will close the opportunity for public comment. Uh, next, uh, I would ask that we accept the meeting transcript for May 5th, 2022. Uh, are there any, were there any questions or revisions on the meeting transcript? Okay, so I'll ask for a motion to accept the meeting transcript. My second, Jacob. Uh, all those members in favor of accepting the meeting transcript of July 5th, 2022. Aye. Aye. Anyone else? Okay, so everyone's in favor. Okay, we have a series of resolutions. So I will, um, I'll just start with, by reading off the, uh, the title. And I think Lauren and I will kind of tag team between these. I'll read through the narrative on the first and then let her do uh, for the other resolutions. So first resolution is Orange County Transportation Council Resolution 2208. It's the adoption of the fiscal year 2021 distribution of FTA sections 5307 and 5340 fund allocations for the Poughkeepsie Newburgh urbanized area. Um, this was first introduced at our July planning committee meeting. Uh, the FTA formula allocations are routine actions regarding the approval of distributions of fiscal, fiscal year 2021, section 5307, 5340, and 5339 funding, which are formula funds allocated to the Mid Hudson Valley TMA for the Poughkeepsie Newburgh urbanized area. 5307 makes federal resources available to urbanized areas for transit capital and operating assistance and transportation planning. 5339 makes federal resources available to states and directs recipients to replace, rehabilitate, and purchase buses and related equipment. 
and to construct bus related facilities included technological changes or innovations to modify low or no emission vehicles or facilities. So with that explanation of the resolution, I will ask for a motion to accept that resolution. So, okay. John, uh, second? Second. Uh, Jason, okay. Uh, all those members in favor of the resolution? Uh, Aye. Right. Right. Okay, anyone opposed? Okay, the resolution passes. Uh, for the next one, I'll just read the name of the resolution, then I'm going to ask Lauren to provide the overview. So, fifth one is the Orange County Transportation Resolution 2022 09. It's the adoption of the fiscal year 2022 distribution of FTA sections 5307, 5340, fund allocations for the Kipsey Newburgh urbanized area. Lauren? Yeah, so, it's the same as the past one, except for it's the fiscal year 2022 allocations. Okay. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, so with that, I'll ask for a motion to accept. Mike, a second. Jacob, okay. All those members in favor? Aye. Uh, you opposed? Okay. Excellent. <laughs> um, so we have next we have the Orange County Transportation Council in the resolution 2022-10. Adoption of fiscal year 21 distribution of FTA sections 5339. Fund allocations for the Poughkeepsie Newburgh urbanized area. Um, Lauren? Yeah, so if you'll remember, we introduced these at the July planning committee meeting, um, and we um, saw uh, concurrence from the council to go back to NISDOT and relook at the formula funding. Um, so that was redistributed um, based on the kind of the older standards of um, the urban bus um, definition. And uh, we reintroduced those updated allocations um, where OCTC received more money um, at the August 9th planning committee meeting. Um, so these are for the fiscal year 21 distribution of 5339 funds. If I may, um, before I ask, for a motion in the second, I've just acknowledged that the next resolution is the same uh, source of funding, uh, but for fiscal year 22. Uh, so I've asked for the board's indulgence to perhaps move these two as a block. Uh, may I have a motion on that? I'll make Jacob. Jacob. Jim? Okay. Um, and I, I would just add that uh, that realloc reallocation was advantageous to the Transportation Council. Um, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, motion passed. Anyone opposed? Let's go quickly. All right. <laughs> Everyone's in favor. Okay. Uh, last uh, I, resolution, Orange County Transportation Council Resolution 2022-12, endorsement of the congestion mitigation and air quality performance measure targets for the Poughkeepsie Newburgh urbanized area. And I'll ask Lauren to go over that. Yeah, so MPOs are tasked to undertake a transportation planning process that shall provide for the establishment and use of performance-based approach to transportation decision-making to support national goals. So the Federal Highway Administration's rule on performance management related to congestion mitigation and air quality improvement program requires that MPOs and states um, with national highway system or NHS facilities with in certain urbanized areas, coordinate and jointly set single performance targets for two traffic congestion measures. Um, that's the percent non-single occupant vehicle and, or non-SOV and the peak hour excessive delay per capita or FED measure. Um, these traffic tra uh, congestion targets were introduced in a presentation at the August 9th planning committee meeting. Um, so we're asking for the adoption of these targets. Lauren, very good. Um, ask for a motion on the resolution. So moved. Okay, a second. Okay. All those members in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, new business. If there's no new business, go on to reports. 
Just a reminder of the policy board meeting on October 11th at 1 p.m. in person. We'll need an in person forum, so please RSVP. We'll be here, we Yep. And I would just, you know, once again, I want to thank uh, Lauren and the uh, Transportation Council Council's uh, staff members, uh, Jessica, Rob, Zach, um, Donna, uh, for their wonderful work that they've been doing and uh, making the meeting. This meeting went so well because of the hard work they put into uh, the presentation. Um, there's a lot of hours that go into this. Also, again, to acknowledge the hard work of uh, New York State DOT and their contributions, as well as uh, County Department of Public Works. So with that, um, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So thank you. Jim? Okay. Um, uh, I don't think I need to call that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Does anyone want to stay? <laughs> thank you. Um, so, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, I'll send you back tonight. 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 I'll